Hi, my name is Tim Carter and this video is titled Science, the Greatest Evidence of Creation and the Greatest Evidence of God. Now, first of all, we set up this dialectic, that is, I did, and when I say we, I refer to the people who taught me all of this. But let's say your agenda is to divorce science from God, and your thesis then would be that science and the Bible are in contradiction. They contradict, they contradict each other. Well, then you come over, your antithesis is Bible or science, or creationism or evolution. And then your synthesis is that evolution is scientific and the Bible is theologic. Well, this is a synthesis, of course, but it's a synthesis of a different kind. It's another synthesis of a different kind. So if we back up for a minute, instead of asking, does science disprove God? And did the creation come into existence by a creator or by a process, which is what the word evolution means. Well, let's just back up and, and repair this and go back to um, maybe a better question. Let's do this for a minute. Since this thesis and antithesis as we have it, let's go here, for example, since that marker is not helping me, I'll find my better marker. So let's say this synthesis here, the one that, let's say the original synthesis, right here, let's go here like this. And let's say there's no contradiction, no contradiction. And diction is just speech and contrary, so uh, no contradiction between uh, theology and science, for example. So the antithesis would be uh, science and theology. And the original synthesis is, is that theology, theology, produce science and now that we know theology produced science we know science is theologic I'll give you an example um, chemistry for example was created I know that word, we don't like to use it with people, but chemistry was created by a theologist, a theologist, a theologian we would say today, but theologist was not an uncommon term. Uh, mathematics, calculus specifically, was created by a theologist, a theologian. Uh, today, uh, psychology in the West, as we understand it in this country, was produced by uh, William James, professor, Harvard professor, a theologist. And those are branches of science. <clears throat> so the question would be, what created science? And if science was created by theology, and it was, everyone knows this, even the great Richard Dawkins of the God Delusion. He's the author of a book called The God Delusion. Um, he runs in circles with men like Sam Harris, formerly a man named Christopher Hitchens. But no one stopped long enough for falling for the false, that is, that diabolical dialectic. They assumed there was a contradiction between the Bible and science, and it prevented people from stopping and thinking that what produced science. Science was not produced by evolution. Evolution was not produced by science. So what is evolution? Well, it's not theological because science is. For example, there's a book called the Quran. It, did, it was not produced from biblical Hebrew. 
neither was it a product of biblical Koine Greek. Well, then what do we call that book? Well, we say it's unbiblical, meaning it falls outside of the field of bibliology, the Bible. Well, evolution is not the creator of science, nor is it a product of science. It's a word that we would just use in, let's say, industry. We would ask someone to uh, manufacture something, and in using a machine, we would say, now follow the process steps so that you could repeat the production of something over and over. We wouldn't say, now follow your evolution book to show you how to repeat that evolutionary step by step. And evolution is just simply saying that the creation created itself. But what is evolution? Well, it was not produced by theology. Science was. So the greatest proof for God himself, uh, the greatest proof for creation, is to ask ourselves what created science and theology would be what, who would be theologians, and they were students of the Bible. For example, um, when we say there's a contradiction, when you start with a contradiction, and you let's say you buy into that because it's it's not a fault of ours it's just our nature uh, to be contrary for some reason somewhere in our flesh there seems to be these propensities to contradict and we seem to like to draw a line so if you say there's a contradiction and you accept that and you say there's a contradiction between uh, the bible and science then you'll give evidence, let's say. You know, people will come up and say, well, science says, science says billions of years, 4.5 billion years for the Earth, for example, the age, which is a really popular catalyst to generate a lot of energy and incite a lot of people unnecessarily. But let's say they say the Earth is 4.5 billion and the universe is 13.7 and someone says yes but the bible just says uh, 6,000 years and they say now that proves that the bible and science contradict well that's interesting because that would mean that the divorce of science from god and the divorce of science from theology that created science and the god who gave us theologic uh, for example, someone said, well, God's word, God's word, word says 6,000 years. And this is the word where we get theo. Here, God is theo in the Koine text, and word is logic. So theo's logic, they'll say, says 6,000 years. My problem is science is theo's logic. It's a theological expression. He said, but what do we do about the math over here? Well, why is the math, this being a product of observation and math, we say in the math that was invented by the theologians is now incorrect since our bridges work, our medical sciences work, pharmacology works. We go to the pharmacist, we use technology, communications. It seems like science works everywhere except when someone divorces it from God and theology, then they assume there's a contradiction, and then they begin to create these examples of a contradiction. Now, this is not the number taught in the Bible. Everyone knows that. <clears throat> and the reason why we know that is because no one says 6,000. Absolutely, they just, it's a ballpark. We say it approximately. Some people that claim that that's important will say, well, it could be 10,000 up to 20,000 years. Some have gone as so far as to say, well, um, hundreds of thousands, but certainly not billions. Uh, and so I don't know if they're working out a math problem uh, because we have math problems. For example, in mathematics, and this is interesting. I've always found it fascinating that, that we have no crisis in any of the fields of science <clears throat> that is in a way that causes people to abandon mathematics, for example. 
uh, 1 over 1 equals 1, 2 over 2 equals 1. Now you can just go on with that if you'd like. Any number over itself equals 1. Well, in mathematics, there's a discussion over about 0 over 0. Does that equal 1? You say, wow, that's a tough question because that's really nothing over nothing, and how can it then generate something? But you say, well, what's the problem? Well, that's my point is within something, a field of science, there are things that haven't yet been resolved, and yet we don't discard mathematics. And yet because of this false contradiction that people teach, and then science is trying, evolutionist, which is just another word for an atheist, is simply trying to divorce science from its theological origins and then of course theology from its theologians and then theologians from the God who provided them the knowledge. So they can somehow speak about science as though somehow it's a field of evolution or that evolution is a category beneath, within science and it doesn't even fall under the category of science any more than a Quran would fall into the field of bibliology, the study of the Bible, for example. It's outside of that. A Book of Mormon, for example. Whatever that is, it was not a product of Greek or Hebrew text, Biblical Greek, Biblical Hebrew, Koine Greek, Biblical Hebrew. So the question is, is over here trying to solve this math problem, apparently, which is all it could be, because there are people who cannot resolve the amount of time between uh, chronolo chronologies within the scriptures. There are voids because the purpose of it was not, the Bible did not say, as people say that it's so important that unless you say something in the thousands, you're denying the word of God. That's absolutely not the case at all. But if it were so important, then the Bible would just simply say in the year 4136 BC God created the heavens and the earth because you can go and look in the Bible if there's other dates very specific times that don't have near the implications as people who have uh, incited a lot of emotion but the biggest question is is does science negate God and that's quite a misunderstanding of science you'd have to fall, fall for the false agenda <clears throat> the diabolical one that wants to divorce science from God and cause people to argue with each other. So Christians who don't, who have fallen from this diabolical dialectic are arguing with each other, <clears throat> which must be hilarious to evolutionists. It must be very much humor to the atheists, for example. But if you were to sit down and teach the most powerful um, doctrine that is that would refute the folly of atheism the folly of evolution you just simply sit down and remember there's no contradiction between the Bible and science because the Bible produced the theologians who produced the theology which produced science so science is theologic science actually proves God's existence its fruit and evidence Without God, there would have been, that is, without Theo, there would be no theologic, no theologic, no theologians, no theologians, no theology, no theology, no science. But that certainly can't be refuted because even the great Richard Dawkins, great in his fame for ridiculing uh, God, Christianity, the Bible, uh, he admitted in a debate with a mathematician a Christian mathematician, which is very appropriate since math is the root word for disciple. And he admitted in the discussion that science was a product of theology. Well, since he admitted it, then there's no other argument, there's nothing else to say with reference to him. What he's trying to introduce is something that's not a product of science, that is evolution, which is not scientific. And he's trying to cause people to either believe that evolution produced science. Well, that's an absurdity. Or that somehow science has produced evolution. Well, that's the true contradiction. 
those are all just simply false assertions. But for people, Christians, for example, to fall prey to this false dialectic, to first accept that a contradiction exists between theology and science would only be possible as a result of this false dialectic that would say there's a contradiction and then give examples. Because the way they talk, they say, well, you can't trust science because it's so far removed from what the Bible teaches and yet the Bible is what produced the science which is a word that means knowledge. And then the synthesis from this diabolical scheme of divorcing science finds people not even knowing. Uh, one uh, seminary, uh, I believe the Master's College, said horrible things about psychology and yet psychology was invented <clears throat> or rather created by a theologian named William James. <clears throat> Someone spoke and were uh, Christians are now saying horrible things about science and saying evolution is scientific and yet the Bible says that science is theologic. So pray for the atheist because science is proof that they are absolutely incorrect. Science being theological, that is it's a product of theology made by theologians is really the argument that they won't get into, by the way, because they are participating in the um, false dialectic, the uh, diabolical dialectic that says there's a contradiction between the Bible. So just because someone hasn't quite reconciled their math, uh, it'd be like someone saying they can't balance their checkbook so they close out their account and don't use banks anymore. Uh, it'd be as though someone says, well, since we don't know for sure if zero over zero equals one, let's discard the mathematics. Well, Nobel Peace Prize are being awarded this time of year for people who continue to work in chemistry. Physics was also produced by a theologian. Uh, we don't have any field of science that did not originate as a product of theology. So with that in mind, I really don't have any emotion or I don't get worked up on how will I argue with an atheist. I just you present science as the greatest proof against atheism. I present science as the greatest theological expression that has afforded man all the great benefits that we have in this life. So if you fail for the thesis that the Bible contradicts science or that science contradicts the Bible, that's where you were misled. And then going and getting examples to prove it only means that you're reinforcing your deception. And a state of deception by reinforcing it, by coming up with examples where science contradicts, uh, those examples don't exist. That is simply um, someone hasn't worked their math out or someone hasn't satisfactorily uh, evaluated the Bible or evaluate the math, but the math that's being used was invented that is created by theologians. So that's quite a quite a puzzle when someone is so deceived by first believing that the Bible is a contradiction with science that they spend their lifetime and emotional energy going out finding examples to support a false premise and then pit brother against brother, Christians against Christians. There's now young earthers, they call themselves. There's old earthers, they call themselves. Um, really, um, those things, apart from an understanding that science is a product of theology, are very regrettable in what's being said. And I'm certain that the diabolical one, which is the word for devil, is having a great time watching people uh, battle atheism or there's really no battle. I would just uh, place science on the table and submit it as evidence for God, for theology, for theologians. I would present medical science, engineering, psychology. I would present physics. I would present the periodic table of elements for example. Uh, you can get PhDs in all the fields of science, but you cannot get one PhD in something called evolution because it doesn't exist. Uh, you can't receive a, uh, uh, you couldn't write a paper proving 
no one could, not even the greatest atheist on the planet, Richard Dawkins, could produce a work that proves that science is a product of evolution or that evolution is a product of science. Evolution is not even a subcategory or a field of science. And that's been the greatest hoax played upon mankind. And that's why I said science is the greatest evidence uh, for God. And that's enough. I think I'm going too long. I may ruin this great video. So uh, that's enough.